I've got one good reason for you to belong to this channel. This channel is all about the great outdoors. Whether it is fishing, hunting, deer hunting, bear hunting, everything there is to do with the great outdoors. All right, good morning. My name is Tom. I come to you from the rustic log cabin in northern Maine. This video is about foundations part two. I couldn't get it all into the uh, the last video, so uh, I'm going to add it today. <laughs> Where I left off with part five was we were talking about cinder blocks for a foundation in the state of Maine. Now I expect a few people to probably have uh, a uh, different opinion here. <laughs> I recommend don't use cinder blocks here in the state of Maine. I want to make sure I had pressed record. Um, and, and because I've been under so many camp foundations where the cinder blocks are absolutely destroyed, uh, cracked, moved, uh, leaking, tipping over, uh, falling in, uh, the list goes on and on. And it's all because of frost, water, uh, everything that's under a, under a cabin. Uh, because uh, that's the way this state is, <laughs> plain and simple. So I've gotten on to that. I, I, I do expect some people say, uh, that's a bunch of crap, but you do what you want to do, but that's my recommendation. And the other thing you really, really, really want to stay away from when you're posting your cabins is sauna tubes. Uh, in the past, sauna tubes and filling them full of concrete and all of that, they, they might, I don't know exactly when they did it, but they did a lot of them. And let me tell you something. Sauna tubes under cabins is some of where I made my most money in 30 years of jacking, leveling cabins. Sauna tubes. Whenever I crawled under a cabin that had sauna tubes, I knew I was going to make some money. And the reason for it was uh, because sauna tubes are crap. You fill them up with concrete, and, and then they, I don't care if you put rebar in them. Uh, all that does is make it ten times harder when they fail. And how do they fail? Each and every sauna tube, rare, 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 would I find a sauna tube that wasn't broken. Where did they break? They broke at 18 to 19 inches below the ground. Every one of them. And what was going on with that rebar that was in there? You know what that rebar was doing? It was going up and down inside of the sauna tube. Because what's happening is the uh, sauna tube breaks off. With it, Usually they were four feet down, five feet down in the ground. So what happens is the sauna tube breaks off at about 18 to 19 inches below the top of the ground and, and, and starts working. And after a few years, that rebar that's in there starts working up and down with the with the sa with the sauna tube and the frost. The frost grabs onto it. The frost lifts up two, three, four, five inches in the winter time. Then the spring, the frost goes out of the ground. The sauna tube sets back down, and so does the piece of rebar. Why is it such a problem? Here's the problem: when you go sticking a sauna tube in the ground four feet tall, that big around. It's tonnage under a cabin. You cannot. Now, I got tools and equipment to deal with broken sauna tubes. But I'm telling you, uh, you get a half of a sauna tube out of the ground and laying under your cabin, it is almost impossible to get it outside of the cabin. Most of the time, I didn't move them out of the cabin, out from under the cabin. I told the clients, I told the customers, I will get this thing out of the way, but we're going to use it as a pinning, we're going to use it for something else other than to post the cabin on. See, a lot of times the ground under a cabin runs downhill, so we could take these sauna tubes and we could dig a hole for them, 
push them up against the bank and use them as as a kind of a, 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 a thing that would hold back the dirt, hold back whatever, uh, without having to get them out from underneath the cabin. Because like I said, it's almost impossible. Now here's where the bigger problem with a sauna tube comes in. That's why we had to make this we had to make this foundation part uh, part two. And I'm not even sure if we'll cover it we'll cover it in this. Uh, here's the other part of a, of the sauna tube problem. You get the top half out of the way. You get the broken half out of the way. Most people, that's where they quit. They get the top half out of the way, the piece that's in the ground, they cover dirt over it, then they bring their round cement pad in and they set it right on top of that, where that broken off sauna tube is. It looks great. <laughs> that's, you know, it looks great. It's a done deal. The pieces, you can't see it no more. It's buried in the ground. Let's go down the road a couple of years. Maybe two, three years, give or take. What do you suppose is happening down in that ground? I'll tell you what's happening down in that ground. That sauna tube is working its way up. <laughs> and, and next thing you know, that 24-inch round cement pad that you had sitting so pretty, now, now, that sauna, now that sauna tube has got that 24 inch pad crooked. And sometimes a lot. Sometimes it could be as much as a 45 degree. If it will go back down in the spring, no problem. But most of the time, that's not what happens. Same thing with old wooden posts that were under some of the cabins, you know, cedar posts. Same thing with, uh, uh, See, they got sauna tubes, see the post. Well, there was another one, boy. I used to, boy. Well, we'll, we'll come back to it. Anyways, uh, rocks. That's right. Any rocks that are under there, sometimes they'll force their way up and make your pad crooked. And the only way to fix everything is to get that rock out of there. Well, it's the same thing with that old piece of sauna tube down there. If you don't get that thing out of the hole, it's going to be nothing but an issue for you down the road. Every time, I don't care, uh, 30 years of jacking leveling cabins, I've seen it, I've done it, uh, can't say enough bad about a sauna tube. <laughs> and the same thing, I mean, over the years, I mean, there are some things that people put in 50 years ago that really did hold. And if you're getting 50 years out of something, then hey, I guess, it, you know, if you're 50 years out of something, what more do you want? You know, when you're talking a cabin that's sitting on a pile of rocks, or you're talking a cabin that's you know, sitting on whatever. Uh, but the sauna tube deal, stay away from it, stay away from it, stay away from it. So, let's, now we still have, yeah, we're going to have to add a part three to this. <laughs> uh the other thing that's a really good, and as far as I'm concerned, next to, next to the uh, concrete foundation, the other thing that I believe is the Cadillac to be able to post your cabin on. They in this state, they must have them in other states too. Uh, in this state, they make a diamond-shaped post. It's about eight inches at the top. It's four feet long, or it's five feet long, and it comes down to. 16 inches square on the bottom. So it's 8 up here and it's 16 down here. And I always call them a diamond shaped post uh, just because. But anyways, uh, that is designed that way so that when the frost hooks onto that post in the winter time, grabs onto it, the frost will lift up and in theory it breaks away from it breaks away from the diamond post. I don't recall any cabin that I placed those posts under or that I uh, even worked on that had those diamond posts under it. That was much of a problem. Now granted, if, if other parts of this cabin are twisting and moving, if it, they will make them post crooked. But the beauty is they don't break off 19 inches in the ground uh, what and they don't what they'll do is they'll tip a little bit but that's a very easy fix jack the cabin up dig around that post a little bit and straighten it back up so 
this is going to end this video right here because there's a lot more to this diamond shaped post than I can get into this video and like I said in the rest of them uh, I'm not going over 10 or 12 minutes with these videos people just don't watch them and there's no sense in me uh, making these videos if they're not going to get watched so anyways but I'm putting this series in now granted uh, these videos are getting uh, quite a few views but they're not getting watched you know the people skipping ahead or whatever so that's why I'm gonna keep these at 10 minutes but I'm putting them in even though you guys are skipping ahead there's people that are trying to build a cabin are trying to educate themselves and all I'm trying to do is put something really informational for content into my archives and that's why I'm building this series on let's talk cabin so you know I, I can't put it any clearer than that as far as if you skip ahead it doesn't help me it doesn't help the video uh, and and you know but I'm gonna do it for these people that want to learn and these people that want to be able to build their own cabin and that's the way it is so anyways <laughs> I don't know hey have a cup of coffee with me I'm going to make uh, another video on this topic, foundations, and it will be number seven. So you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.